okay good evening uh i think uh, the lighting is good today okay so i'll calculate moment of inertia of a ring uh and uh, the axis is passes through the center perpendicular to the surface for example uh, if i show you if i show you suppose this is a ring okay this is a ring now this is a ring and one axis is here like this and the ring is rotating like this okay moment of inertia of the ring which uh, which is rotating about the axis okay passing through its center and perpendicular to the plane of the plane so in this way uh, the ring is rotating so moment of inertia of the ring um about an axis about the axis passing through passing through passing through the center and perpendicular to the plane plane because a ring can uh, rotate in many ways Right, the ring can rotate in many ways. For example, and for every all the cases, the moment of inertia will be different. You see, this is circle. Okay, if I'll keep my axis here, the about a tangent, the ring can rotate like this. If I'll keep the uh, axis about the diameter, the ring can rotate like this. if i keep the uh axis tangent but perpendicular to its uh, plane then it can rotate like this so many ways you can see three four cases i told you the ring can rotate about many means diff different types of axis so here it is passing through the center and perpendicular to the axis of rotation so what is how you calculate so this is let's say the ring and it passes through the center perpendicular to it so you know that your moment of inertia okay is equal to integration r square dm this is the moment of inertia formula if the mass is Uh, of that body is distributed uniformly then you can write r square d so now let's take this uh, small mass as dm small length dx and this small length dx mass is let's dm okay then what you can do i can write that for full length of this ring that is your if radius capital r then for 2 pi r capital r its mass is let's say m total mass is capital m for unit length m by 2 pi r and for dx length the mass is for dx length the mass is m by 2 pi r 
dx. Okay. And what is the mass of dx length? The mass of the dx length is dx. Okay. So ultimately, I can write what is the r here? R is the radius, the distance okay, of the mass. So I can write here epita r square dm. Dm is this quantity. You can write it down. That is m by two pi r dx integration. All these are constants, right? R capital R, one R cancelled out. All of them constants here. M two pi r. Everything is constant. Okay. Only I'll integrate dx. If I'll integrate dx, I'll get the full length. Okay. If I'll sum, keep on adding all the small small elements, dx one, dx two, then I'll get full full length of the ring. So full length of the ring means total mass m. Okay, so I can write uh, mass total m and the distance is length is two pi r full length. So if I integrate, all the constants will come outside. That is r m by two pi and the integration dx. So dx integration is r m Two pi is two pi r. Two pi two pi cancel on it. M r r is m r. So this is your moment of inertia about an axis that is A B, which is passing to the center of passing through the. Center of the ring and perpendicular to that surface of the ring, which is rotating like this. Ring is rotating like this. This okay, is perpendicular to the center. Uh, perpendicular to the that plane. Okay. So, uh, and so many uh, faces are there, and so uh, so many uh, uh, shapes are there. And also for a single ring, also different structures are there. As I have shown you, tangent is uh, it will rotate about the diameter. Tangent it will rotate about in tangent. Okay, many. So I show you many cases possible on the ring or for all the for the ring also. One case I discuss, other case I will discuss in other videos. And also we can discuss or we can calculate moment of inertia for a sphere. Okay, and uh, cylinders. Then uh, hollow sphere, uh, then hollow cylinder, then disc, and uh, disc portion many times comes. Then a rod, and then uh, your um, plane, uh, means rectangular lamina. So we can calculate uh, moment of inertia of many shapes. We'll calculate one by one in uh, in my next videos. Okay. And also I'll discuss about uh, your. Parallel axis theorem and perpendicular axis theorem because we will require them in uh, uh, deriving certain um, means calculating the moment of inertia for, for certain shapes. It will help us. So I'll also discuss about moment of inertia. Um, your means how will you use the moment of inertia in case of parallel axis using parallel axis theorem and perpendicular axis theorem. Uh, in my last video, I have explained. What is moment of inertia, and how can you get this one, or what is the idea of moment of inertia from the concept of your kinetic energy? Okay. So let's stop here for this uh, uh, class, uh, and in the next video I will discuss about other cases of moment of inertia. Thank you. Let me stop.